Hi, I'm Dr. Bertice Berry, and I really need to tell you this story. It's a story about a phenomenon that no one's really talking about, and I feel like I really need to. On September 11th, the day of the attacks on the Trade Center Towers, I was scheduled to be in New York on the 132nd floor um, several weeks before my dear friend slipped into a coma. I went to see her. The following week, we had her a memorial service, and I went back. And then that next week, I was scheduled to be there in that meeting on September 11th, and I just didn't feel like going. I often say my friend Jillian saved my life. You. Yeah. My sister, Rocky, was there. She was on her way there. It was the first time in her life that she's ever been late for anything. She had a big meeting there and she had a whole team waiting for her. Um, by the time she realized what was happening, she had to get all of her people and make sure everybody was shuttled to safety, which she did. So when people ask me where was I on September 11th, I tell them that I was watching the news, that my son had just gone to school, that I had to go and get him, that we were standing and waiting to hear from Rocky. We were praying and, and all concerned and in worry for, for our nation. It took me a while to say I was supposed to be there. There is a survivor's guilt that comes with things like that. And you don't speak about it because it feels like you're robbing someone else of the what really happened. Like your story is not the story. It's some secondary what if story. And you need to sit down and let others speak. This is the only thing I have to equate to what is happening now for me and many of my friends. And I don't hear anybody talking about it. And I want to just take a moment to address it. There are some of us who are living through this pandemic. And if you ask us how we're doing, we'll say, eh, I don't really know how I'm feeling. Because we can't admit that this pandemic that has locked us inside of our own self and our own homes with our own families has brought forth something beautiful. And that we're not in the despair that many others are in. We are loving the life of being a hermit. Um, I'm an introvert forced to be an extrovert. I, I say it many, many times and I do extrovert very, very well for a couple of hours at a time. But there, this time has put me in my house longer than I've ever been home in my entire life. I've never spent more than seven days consecutively in my home. I've just traveled for work and work. And it feels like everybody's going through what I go through when sometimes I have a flare up or something is going on. But there's this other thing that's happening that I'm connecting with like-minded souls and hearts that I am more creative and dare I say, more productive and intelligent than I've ever been that I am sparked in ways that I never could have been. And I don't want to say it out loud because I know how so many are struggling. And so I'm doing whatever I can <clears throat> to help those who are struggling to see inside their beautiful selves. You are beautiful. You are amazing. And there are ideas and inventions and dreams that you've not tapped into. And as difficult as this time is, especially for our brothers and sisters in Texas and places where the weather is wreaking havoc on their lives, there is still God. There is still love. There is still the divine, the all, whatever you call it, in the midst 
of this mess. God is with us. And so those of you who are like me, who are dealing with this survivor's guilt, because you like being inside the person you've evolved to being, I see you. I love you. I understand you. I am you. I love you.